It has been back and forth today here in Morgantown. Texas Tech jumped out to a 13 nothing lead. West Virginia, you see that, went on a 27 to 3 scoring run. They had scored 20 unanswered points, but all of a sudden it's Texas Tech who has scored the last 14. And now with four and a half to go, three timeouts remaining, West Virginia needs to make some stops. That last play defensively for Tech, that's just the experience of going up against an air raid type offense every day in practice. That mesh route is very important to the air raid. Washington, they swing it out to him and he gets chased down by Nick Kwiatkowski. He picks up five. Had a helmet pop off there, DeAndre Washington, so he has to take a play off here. And conveniently, they just go one back and leave in Williams. Davis Webb has now set a school record for a freshman quarterback with 425 passing yards. Delayed handoff to Williams. Williams has the first down. He's going to stay in bounds, and he goes out of bounds. A 15-yard run for Kenny Williams. Well, a couple missed tackles early. And again, Eric Ward mentioned it earlier. He's got a chance to catch more balls than anybody that's ever come through Texas Tech University. And a lot of receivers, hey, it's not in my contract to block down the field. And he continues to impress blocking guys 15, 20 yards down the field and turning what would be an 8-yard gainer into a 10-yard, 15-yard gainer. Great job by the senior wide receiver. And off to Williams up the middle. Williams diving. Going to be about a yard shy of the first down with 3.27 to go. Now it becomes fun for an offensive line. And there is a player down, Kyle Rose, for West Virginia. Clock will stop at 3.19. If you're starting to think about timeouts and what to do if you're West Virginia, remember, you can still have that bend but don't break defense for the Mountaineers. If you give up a field goal, you're still in this game. If you give up a touchdown, well, then you're in real trouble. A lot of trouble, and it, it'd be nice to not even let them get up there and, and kick a field goal. Here you've got a second down in very short. Good to see Rose pop up and, and head off. Sophomore from Centerville, Ohio. Interesting how you, you recruit to West Virginia. There's not a lot of homegrown talent. There's, there's one legacy kid, Dana Holgerson told us, and that's a kid that's a junior in high school that's already committed, had a dad that played here. But other than that, 15 different states are represented in last year's recruiting class. And right now on this team, there are 21 players from the state of Florida. So Justin, a second down and very short. Not ideal for a defense, but you got to find a way to make a big play. Break that football out of there. Pick one off and get it back. And off to Washington, who has the first down. And, you know, it may sound crazy, but if I'm West Virginia, I don't mind them getting the first down because you're not going to use a timeout on third and one. And they'll probably go for it on fourth and one at that point. So now you, you're facing a first and ten. The ball's at the 36-yard line. Now is when if you make a couple stops, you can call some timeouts. And it starts right here on first down. They've got to make a big play here on first down and gain the upper hand in the battle with these chains. Good job by Davis Webb, though, using the majority of the play clock. And, and checking off here to a run because they had him spread out. The handoff to Washington, there's the stop, and I'd expect a timeout here. And you get it, and Justin, that's a great point. It's so much of, of what goes on in college ball these days is about the pace, about the tempo. And in these quarterbacks, they almost don't understand how to get up there and stand and let a play clock tick all the way down to eat up a clock. So many wasted seconds that you, you, you leave out there for the team that's trailing a chance to come back. 
did a good job to let it tick down there. And now we're down to 222 on the game clock. A reminder, coming up next on Fox Sports 1, it's the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series set up from Talladega. We'll get you out there at the completion of our game. And speaking of Talladega, last night, getting ready to go to bed, flipping through the channels, <laughs> Talladega Nights was on TV. And, of course, that made me stay up like an hour later than I was hoping to. Well, you sound fresh to me. <laughs> I'll break your hip, old man. <laughs> oh, Ricky Bobby, second down and seven. Washington in the backfield. Two timeouts remaining for West Virginia. Hand off to Washington again. Stopped in the backfield. Second effort. Tackled now by Kwiatkowski. And there's another timeout used. So third down coming up. A big third down upcoming here for Texas Tech. Look at the Big 12 standings. The Red Raiders 3-0. Texas also 3-0. Well, and you look at Texas Tech and their start, they beat Kansas. They beat Iowa State, two teams down here at the bottom of the pack. And here comes the gauntlet. And it starts right here on the road. If they can hang on today, even though West Virginia is one and two, three and three overall. But next up, they've got Oklahoma in Norman. Then it's Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State looks like they're going to hang on over TCU today in Kansas State. And then against Baylor, at Jerry's World. So here comes the gauntlet. But first things first, Cliff Kingsbury, you and your team moved to 7-0 and and feel pretty good about a big win in a hostile environment. A lot of it hinges on this play. Third and six. Taking a shot down the field. Complete. Jordan Davis. What a big completion. What a heartbreaker. For this secondary of West Virginia, finally an underthrown ball. We've seen him try to go back shoulder all day long. This underthrown to Jordan Davis, and it's perfect because the coverage was right there, stride for stride, and Darwin Cook can't believe it. But now, like you said, they've got to stiffen and hold him to a field goal. First and goal. Williams spins away. Williams goes down. And West Virginia only has one timeout remaining. Darwin Cook got the penetration. And that's a good start to get through there. How about the throw by Davis Webb, the true freshman, on third and six, putting the ball in the air and completing a pass 27 yards to Jordan Davis. When Kingsbury told us he had three quarterbacks that could win in the Big 12, I wasn't sure if it was coach speak or not. But I think he meant it. That is incomplete, and I'm kind of puzzled as to why there was even a pass there as opposed to a run. So now third down is coming up. Man. Look at the coverage just continuing to run by the defensive back from West Virginia. Avery Williams and coming back for it. The Arlington High School Colt, Jordan Davis, to put it down there. Third and goal. One timeout remaining for West Virginia. The play clock is down to two. There is some movement. Shot towards the end zone. Touchdown. Jay Samolo. <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury said, I will be the coolest coach you've ever had if you let me be, if you are disciplined, if you behave. That's not a typical head coach celebrating right there with his players. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it was fun to see that great big grin. And look at him. Enjoy it with his staff and his players over there on the sidelines. And two touchdowns here today for Amaro. He only had one coming in. Led all tight ends in the nation in receptions. Buston's extra point is good. Meanwhile, that play just got off before the play clock went off. And it results in a touchdown for Jay Samaro. Here he is, the Y inside. They don't find him again down there deep in the red zone. 
You think you're going to cover him with Kwiatkowski? Kwiatkowski does a fine job at linebacker, but you can't match him up with Amaro and expect to get out of here alive. Davis Webb making him pay. <laughs> you get a hit on him. Oh, that's great. And you know, it's one thing, kind of hit on it throughout the day, when you've got all these players coming from all these junior colleges across the country, all these transfers, like Charles Sims, and you try to immediately, hey, we're going to be a team and we're going to play together and you haven't been through an off season. I don't envy Dana Holgerson. On the other side, you get a lot of returning football players in Lubbock at Texas Tech, and then you've got a coach that comes rolling in there with the confidence and and it just it magnifies the camaraderie that you have and it magnifies the confidence that already should be in a college football team but when your coach is used to winning like that it just rubs off on the entire team and that's exactly what you've got with these texas tech red raiders and how much fun is it to be a texas tech fan a texas tech football player right now riding high with oklahoma coming up next week and you're seven and oh